YouTube family, what's the deal? It's your boy Crispy Clean Cliff of Cliff World TV. And y'all already know how I'm rocking family. And today, man, we finna take a deep dive into the interesting life of Alabama's own Honeycomb Brazy. Now, I'm not gonna lie to y'all YouTube family. This gotta be one of the craziest stories that I've covered, man. Look, and that's saying a lot, man. Y'all know I covered that little Yami story too now. Hey, man, I'm telling y'all, bro, this is going to be one of the ones, bro. Uh, make sure y'all kick back, get your doobie, kick back like we're finna watch the movie, man. This is boy Chris McLean, Clear for Clear World TV. We're finna get right on into it. Nation Jones, or also known to the world as Honeycomb Brazy, was born February 23rd, 1995, in Atlanta, Georgia. Although, his mother would give birth to him in the state of Georgia. He'd actually be raised in the historical southern city of Mobile, Alabama. A country town that's about 250 miles away from the city that was known for the 1963 16th Street Baptist Church bombing in Birmingham. Mobile, Alabama would play a historical role as being one of the strictest in the land when it came down to segregation laws. Now, although we're 60 years past the Civil Rights Movement, Remnants of a lost time can still be felt in the air. I just thought I'd give y'all a little brief history on Alabama. But anyways, let's move forward. Young Nashad went off to stay with his grandparents as a child, and this was due to both of his biological parents always being in and out of jail. In fact, Nashad's father is Big Honeycomb Brazier for Bounty Hunter Bloods. Daddy got lights in and he doing life. You know, free my daddy, that Big Con. And right now, he living like a kingpin behind bars as we speak. But we're going to touch on that a little later down the line. Anyways, at a tender adolescent age of 10 years old, while other kids was riding bikes and playing with Pokemon and Digimon cards, and even having just some minor behavior issues, young Nation would be arrested for the first time. And get this, YouTube family. He'd be arrested for breaking the side of a warehouse and ride go-karts with some friends from the neighborhood. A little innocent if you ask me. The group would actually joyride the go-karts all the way up until the point of police arrival. Now unknowingly to them, they had triggered a sign of the alarm and the system had alerted law enforcement in the area. Being that it was Nation's first run in with law enforcement, the judge would show some leniency and place the young juvenile Nation on probation. Nashawn would often have problems staying focused in middle school, and he really didn't understand how the lessons that were taught in school would transfer over into the real world. So in the eighth grade, he'd drop out of school. And like many other children that was his age, born under such tough circumstances, he'd become a product of the environment that raised him. He wouldn't even make it to high school. His mom was very disappointed to say the least, but there wasn't really much she could say to him. His father was incarcerated at the time, and she herself fell victim to the same system that would later have a stronghold over the whole family. She'd often have warrants out for her arrest, causing her, too, to be in and out of jail. So the motherly bond between mother and son was more like a friendship than the latter. He, just like all young men at that age, needed the guidance of a male. Not only any male, his father. But you know how the saying goes, it takes a man to raise a man. Nevertheless, after dropping out of middle school and committing himself to the streets of Alabama, he'd take up residency with his auntie for a while. And everything would go as smooth as angel skin until one day, conflict would arise. Some money had came up missing. His aunt had a son that would obviously make this his cousin. Now, allegedly, they had a family affair going on. LaShawn's cousin and his dad, Big Brazy, was in business together. When Brazy's dad did a count over the books, he had found out that some money had been missing. And it turned out that it was the cousin who had been skimming off the top. Now, Honeycomb Brazy didn't take kindly to this at all. And the two were getting an intense argument with insults being thrown around during the dispute with his cousin. Young Brazy would take it upon himself to settle the scope for his father. Now, either he was going to cough up that money that he owed him, or he was about to take it up a notch. And the cousin, 
Man, he remained adamant about not being the one that stole the money. And without even a second of hesitation, Brazen would go inside of his big Jabot jeans, pull out a 40 caliber, and shoot his own blood cousin, ultimately leaving him paralyzed. She do her thing too, you know. But like, I would stay on my mama, mama though. I stay with my Aunt Tony, you know. But that, that shooting my Aunt Nisha house on time. But I end up shooting her son. That was my cousin, so I, you know, they all type of shit going on. Whoa, wait, wait. You shot your cousin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Like on accident? Nah, like on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like a was it like a family or like was it an argument? Like can you take us through that situation? Nah, that was like him and my dad, some shit with him and my dad, you know. He had got down, some money came up missing. I'm just gonna say that. Some money. He was only 13 at the time of shooting. After shooting his own cousin, he'd be so spooked that he'd go on the run. And his first initial thought was I done caught my first body. He had thought he caught him a body. I mean his pops was away for a body, so he felt as though his dad probably would be proud of him for handling the business. See, like I said before, Brazy's dad was actually big honeycomb Brazy from Bounty Hunter Bloods. And before his incarceration, he was well known for resolving problems in the streets of Mobile, Alabama, to say the least. Big Brazy is actually still incarcerated as we speak. And right now, he practically lives like a boss from prison. I mean, the man is sipping lean. He eating steak and shrimp for bocce. Wearing diamonds, diamonds all in his grill, Cartier shirt. I, I'm going to throw some videos up here just so y'all think I ain't capping, man. Like, look, the dude really living like Soprano. But anyway, young 13-year-old Brazy thought he had killed his own cousin. But fortunately for both parties, he lived. But unfortunately for young Nishan, the police was on his trail now. He'd ultimately be arrested for the shooting of his cousin. And in a strange turn of events, his cousin would later gain some mobility back in his body, allowing him to walk again, and the two would patch up their relationship. Now, I don't know, man. If my cousin clapped me, I'm probably gonna have to get some lick back at the family reunion. But anyway, Brazy would spend the next four years of his life incarcerated, just like his father, Big Brazy. And y'all know what they say about the apple, right? Right, exactly. So he had spent his time during incarceration, beating on walls and coming up with jailhouse anthems. And unlike many of the rappers today, Honeycomb Brazy was actually living the raps that he was rapping. Brazy wouldn't be released from that bid until he was 16 years old. In which case, he would run into trouble again. Man, it wouldn't even be 90 days after being released from doing that three year bid. December 12, 2011. According to Captain Christopher Levi of the Mobile, Alabama Police Department, Nashawn Terrell Jones, age 16 of Montgomery, Alabama, was arrested that Thursday evening and charged with first degree robbery and first degree assault. Now, according to the police report, at approximately 5.45 p.m. December 12th, the victim was walking down the 800 block of Center Street when he was approached by two teenagers. They stopped, talked for a few minutes before carrying on, and then one of the teenagers would put out a loaded handgun and shoot the victim in the leg. The second teen, identified by police as Jones, took the money from the victim's pocket, and both teenagers fled the scene. Police arrested Nashawn Jones, AKA Lil Honeycomb Brazy at his grandparents' house. And at the time, the officers had not identified the second suspect. 
Police will later go on to find his accomplice will be his friend, Derek Dick Thomas, also known as Dick. Little Honeycomb's right hand man. But unfortunately, the day while Honeycomb Brazy was being brought in and arranged on charges, his right hand man, Derek, aka Dick, was killed over a $5 crap game by a 40 year old man by the name of Anthony Williams. Later, Brazy would go on interviews and admit it wasn't actually him that did the shooting, but he did the time. Anyway, in that incident, he would go on to spend the next four years of his life in prison. He'd be released from prison, but in true honeycomb Brazy fashion, yeah, he'd find himself in another pickle again. But this time, things would get tricky. February 21st, 2016. Just after his release, he'd allegedly go over to sell one of his female friends some lab. Now the only problem was the female friend that he was going to sell the loud to was the girlfriend of his longtime friend Ladarius Moore, aka Stank. Apparently, Stank and his girlfriend at the time had been living together at the Woodland Apartments. And while away from the house, Brazy would visit said girlfriend. All the while, Ladarius Moore was away from the residence. Ladarius Moore would show up out of nowhere and the girlfriend refused to let him inside of the home. He suspected that she was hiding somebody inside of the residence, so after multiple attempts at trying to get her to open the door, he forced himself inside the house and kicked the door down. And to his surprise, who he see standing inside of his house? His homie, Brazy. Now that's Brazy. Brazy told Ladarius, man, look, I'm only over here to sell her some weed, but dude wasn't trying to hear it. Ladarius and Brazy started fighting, and eventually somebody put out a handgun and fired, leaving Stank dead. About a deadly shooting that left a 22-year-old man dead last night. It is the second weekend in a row there's been a murder in Pritchard. Local 15's Christian Jennings is live in the newsroom tonight. Christian, no arrests have been made in this case either. No, but police do have a person of interest in the case. They believe the shooting stemmed from a domestic dispute. It was very heartbreaking seeing that he has a small child who now would never know who his father is. Police say 22-year-old Ladarius Moore died at Woodland's apartments around 8 last night. Family members tell us Moore lived here with his girlfriend. The female subject was there and he showed up. She didn't want to let him inside and allegedly it appeared that he kicked down the door and forced his way inside the residence. There was another individual that was there and there was an exchange of words any other individual reacted, which caused to the shooting. Pritchard Police Investigator Robert Martin says Moore was shot multiple times. They now have a male person of interest in the case. We won't say whether he was inside the residence at that time or he just showed up on the scene, but we do have a person of interest at this time. The person who alleged did the, um, the act is a person that already has a violent history. I think with senseless violence, that needs to stop because every day someone's dying here in Mobile. Before we go any further, I think it's important to let y'all know, man. Stank was the nephew of a big time kingpin coming out of Alabama, man. And when I say big time, I'm talking 200 kilos, $3 million a week, El Chapo type of dude, man. His name was Darren Southall. And I'm telling y'all, bro, dude had some serious pull in Mobile, Alabama that uh, may be looking to come up and, and fill the void that has been created uh, by him. With this plea, Southall admits he's accountable for 4,000 kilograms of cocaine, 24 kilograms of heroin, and he admits he took in about $24 million during the time of his operation. Kenneth Ladarius would ultimately be the one that comes back to hunt brazing in the long run. Stank was a very loved man in his community and amongst the gang. And if I hadn't already made it clear earlier in this story, Honeycomb Brazy and his father are both notable bloods in their section. But that didn't mean that they was untouchable. Brazy would fall out with half of his own hood behind the shooting of Ladarius, and they'd ultimately turn their backs on him. The whole situation in itself was foul to them, and it was unacceptable. He'd go on a run for a while, but Brazy would later be apprehended and charged with the homicide of his childhood friend, Ladarius Moore. He spent a little over a year in jail fighting for his innocence, 
But while being incarcerated, y'all can say he was a marked man. And any and everybody surrounding themselves around the situation of the beloved Ladarius was going to come and praise it with every chance they got. And one day, he'll find himself in a situation where he had to defend himself against three people. That's crazy. Um... And you and in jail, you stabbed a guy three times. You stabbed three different people. Yeah, yeah, I did a whole lot of. Sh I, did, I just stabbed way more, way, way more people. They don't bleed on my dead brother grave. Like way more than that. Like hell, yeah, yeah, I stabbed three a day. Like on blood, <laughs> I did that on blood. That's no cow. You know no cow. You route. I was real team. So. You stabbed three different people for one of your homies. Nah, it was on some most In an even crazier turn of events, Brazy would even share a cell with the man that he seemed to mirror his life after. Yeah, his father. He'd be seen pictures sharing the same six by nine small dwellings as his father for the next six months. He lived as closest to anybody as you can possibly get. And that anybody would be his father. They'd spend the next six months reflecting on life and having conversations that have seemed to last on for days. His father was away for murder. And although his son had seemed to follow in his footsteps to the T, he was still his father. He expressed that although he knows exactly how the streets can be, he recognized that his son had a chance to be different in life and that it wasn't too late to turn it all around. He ain't gone soft on him or anything. He just wanted more for his son, like any real man should. And Lil Brazy was talented, and his father knew this oh so well. Brazy, by the grace of God, would beat the murder charge. Now, don't ask me how he did it. I have no clue. This is the South. People can carry guns. It could have been a self-defense thing. I don't know, man. But what I do know is the murder of Ladarius Moore AKA Stank will turn Brazy's own hood against him. And beating that murder charge seemed to only add more fuel to the fire. They wanted his head. And upon release, Brazy would be targeted by members of his gang. He'd be shot several times, and he'd even suffer gunshot wounds to the head. His injuries would be so severe that he'd actually be put into a medical induced coma. Doctors told Brazy, Man, you ain't never gonna walk again. But with physical therapy, the Lord, and the sheer determination to get revenge on those that had put him in that situation, these would be all the right ingredients that he needed to walk again. This was all around the same time that his father's words would start resonating with him. It was time that he took this music stuff serious. He already knew the outcome about playing in the streets, either dead or in jail. So in 2018, he started hitting the studio. And in June of that same year, he go on to drop a viral music video entitled Freestyle that'll put the Alabama artists on the map. And after that, he just dropped videos back to back. Eventually, he gained the attention of the Southern mob boss, Jay Prince, and ink a deal with Rapper Light Records. Things was really starting to look up for Brazy. I mean, he was seeing the music videos riding Rolls Royce while toting a 007 style golden AK-47. Man, it was looking good now. Jay Prince had him shining, mob tie chains on. But like always, February 2020, Brazy will be sent back to prison yet again. And this time, it was for a parole violation. In January of 2020, prosecutors were put into motion to bring Brazy back into the judge and revoke his probation, claiming that the rapper was in possession of marijuana and a firearm. He was brought back before the judge, and the prosecutors were unable to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he actually did possess a gun and the marijuana. So they had to let him go. He, he was a free man again, man. Now, after being released, Brazy would be targeted again in another shootout, man. Him and his homie was sitting outside of a barber shop in Montgomery, Alabama, aka that gun, a few hours away from Mobile, while going live on Facebook, practically letting the whole world know his location. 
a great BMW pull up and start letting off shots to the rapper and his crew. Nigga, if my little if my little brother got cancer, nigga, my little brother out here fight. Show your head, man. This shit for real. My little brother fighting cancer out there, whole nigga. My mama, I, I got, nowhere going. I got my little brother with me, nigga, fighting cancer, nigga. You not gonna, gonna play with me while my little brother with me fighting cancer? Did you nigga stupid? Man, Lord, man, Lord, man. <laughs> Them nigga hit, they hit that whole wall. They were hitting that this car, man. That's why that nigga looked in that car, man. You said that nigga looked in that car, man. Y'all, and you told that nigga, ain't nobody here. You don't know nobody. That was that same nigga. So get what? He felt some type of way. He, he did that for you, Rondo. He felt some type of way about you woofing out him. He like, shit, you in my city, you woofing out him. What the he like, you in my city, you whiffing at a nigga. Yeah, that's why they, they sprayed that hole. That why, so this why the Jeep ain't get hit. It's just, we got a gun in the hole, they know we together, so they would made them hit the back wonder, bro. Yeah, you feel me? But I knew they could have got off right now. But like, ain't no way y'all ain't got off. That nigga, that nigga was trying to get run, though. Yeah, we probably be dead. We probably be dead, huh? Like, I don't respect that. <laughs> Brazy and his crew would actually retaliate and fire back in self-defense and it's unclear rather anyone in their other car was hit. Things were starting to heat up and now that Honeycomb Brazy was practically a star, it has seemed to only amplify and put more fuel on the fire. And speaking of fire, February 17, 2021, while sitting inside of their home, the grandparents of the rapper Honeycomb Brazy was having a normal night watching the nightly news when bullets started whizzing inside of their home. As they were ducking for cover, bullets would strike an oxygen tank inside of the home, causing a combustion that would lead to a gas fire. And both of his grandparents at the time had been struck by bullets, leaving them unable to escape the fire. Public Safety Director James Barber confirmed that the deaths were being investigated as a homicide. starts right now with breaking news. Hello everyone, I'm Devin Walsh. We begin with breaking news this afternoon. The grandparents of a local rapper shot and killed, then their home set on fire. The grim details just revealed by emotional family members at the scene. WKRG News 5's Nicolette Schleisman is live near the home on Dr. Thomas Avenue. Nicolette. You can see behind me there are still a lot of people here investigating. Calling it gruesome. They've also identified the two as Leela and Tony Lewis and were the head of their families. And we've also learned that they are the grandparents of local rapper Honeycomb Brazy. Now, the family says that a neighbor saw a car pull up and shoot into their home, and the house then went up into flames. Witnesses tell us that they heard a boom and what sounded like a bunch of shots around the time of the fire. This all happened on Dr. Thomas Avenue around 630 last night. The home is destroyed and the fire was so big that it damaged the home next door. Public Safety Director James Barber confirmed that the deaths were being investigated as a homicide. Barber says the fire damage slowed down the search for the cause of death and other evidence. Family members told WKRG News 5 they were shot to death the house was set on fire. But at the time, Barbara said it was too early in the investigation to confirm that. We don't know how it happened, Barbara said, but we do know that someone came and did this. We know it was gruesome, like no one deserved to be taken away from this earth like this, says a family member. Not only were they our family, but you had no regard for human life. You had no regard for life at all. This didn't even make any sense. Y'all have heard so many lives, daughters, sons, grandkids, great grandkids. Y'all talking about a couple that had been together for over 50 years. Everybody knew them in the neighborhood. Everybody loved them. To know them was to love them. They didn't deserve this, man. 
Who does something like this? When do they stop? When is enough enough? Y'all done took two innocent people away from this earth to live their lives here to be this age just to leave like that? That's crazy, said Letcher Lane, a family member. The family says Layla and Tony Lewis were beloved. My mom and daddy was the head and the tail and the roots, says Tanika Jones, their daughter. The family confirms that they were grandparents to the local rapper Honeycomb Brazy. And the Instagram tribute to the two, Honeycomb Brazy were right. Long live grandma and grandpa. Y'all was my heart for real. I put y'all in every song. I hate y'all had to get caught up with my ish. When news asked Joan about the rapper, they just said, he's broken. He's broken. He don't know how to feel. And that was his mama, not just his grandmama. She was a mother to all of us, to all of her kids. She was more than grandmama. He was more than a granddaddy. He was a father. He helped us raise our children. The fire had started at around 6.30 that Wednesday night on Dr. Thomas Avenue. And it was so large that it had spread to the next home. Pearlie Howard lives there with her son, Jesse Hall. They said they didn't see what happened, but they heard the gunshots. And when they heard the gunshots, they hit the floor. They saw the bullets flying above them, so they even got even lower. They waited on the floor for 10 minutes, and they finally came out just to see that both houses were on fire. Honeycomb Brazy would say, man, this hurt. I begged y'all to move out the house, but y'all wouldn't let me move y'all. Brazy was out of town when the shooting happened, so I can only imagine how he felt. People would even be afraid to attend his grandparents' funeral, man. But it'd be close friends like his music collaborator and friend Tech from Louisiana that'd be among the handful of real ones that actually pull up despite the dangerous environment and show some real support for a mourning friend in need. But a year later, justice would be served. Now, even though I'm sure he wanted to take justice in his own hands, just like I'm sure all of us would, four people, including that convicted drug kingpin that I was telling y'all about, man, was charged with the murder that Friday, 2021. Nearly a year after the days of their death, four people were charged with the murder. The dude I was telling y'all about, Darren D.D. Jamark Southall's kingpin, 39, who had pleaded guilty in November to running a $24 million drug empire in Mobile, Alabama. Hey, man, Honeycomb Brazy wasn't playing with no little guys. They were charged with several counts of shooting into an occupied dwelling and murder, according to WKRG. Three other suspects, Terrence Watkins, Jamarcus Chambers, and the third suspect that had not been apprehended at the time were charged with the murder of Lewis's death. Fox 10 reported that the Lewis's was the grandparents of Honeycomb Brazy, real name, Nashawn Jones. Mobile County Assistant District Attorney Lewis Walker said the arrest marked as a breakthrough in the case. Honeycomb Brazy, you guessed it, would be apprehended and arrested yet again. And this time, they kind of had a solid case on them. They would arrest Honeycomb Brazy for breaking his parole by being a felon near and around the firearm. While last time they didn't have much evidence, this time they would actually use the footage that Honeycomb Brazy posted himself. Man, rappers, y'all gotta do better. Honeycomb Brazy actually reposted that footage of the shootout that they got in in Montgomery, Alabama at that barbershop on Facebook Live. Prosecutors would actually use this footage and say that he was at least around or personally had a firearm in his possession. They were revoking probation and he would be looking at 15 years hanging over his head from the 2016 situation. This boy has been on probation since he was 10 years old. YouTube family. This boy has been on probation since he was 10 years old at least. Man, look, they got him this time. Now, while the world thought it was old for Honeycomb Brazy, hey, man, they even, they even said the boy was finna do 15 years. Honeycomb Brazy would be stuck between the rock and the hard spot. He was also seen, man, making the best of his time while he was incarcerated 
by having a studio inside of his jail cell. But it wouldn't be all good. He would actually take to Instagram and give us an inside look and a message on how they were treating him inside of there. They were starving him. They was beating him. They was cutting him off from his restrictions. They was putting him on lockdown, man. It was crazy. It seemed like it wasn't going to be no end. And as a matter of fact, the world kind of went on without Honeycomb Brazy, including Jay Prince and Mob Ties. And a strange turn of event, apparently Honeycomb Brazy and Finesse two times had a relationship. And Honeycomb Brazy had expressed his feelings of how Jay Prince was doing him. When Finesse two times was released from prison, he'd go over there to Jay Prince and Mob Ties and sign. Honeycomb Brazy felt like he was trying to trick him out of his spot. He'd go on Instagram from behind prison walls and express exactly how he felt about Ricky Hampton. But it was easy to ignore because everybody thought he was gonna be away for 15 years. But think again, November 2023, Honeycomb Brazy would take to Instagram and show us that he had been released from prison. Couple weeks after Rilo, man. Speaking of Rilo, Honeycomb Brazy, as soon as he was released, would go right at Finesse two times neck. He'd actually call him a rat, expressing how he felt that he was riding home in a truck. And Jay Prince had picked Finesse two times up and put him on a jet. And speaking of Rilo, he had let it be known that Finesse two times had only turned Muslim because he knew that he had that bad name on his jacket. Private jet. <laughs> hey, what the f about private jet? <laughs> ain't no way a rat got out and got a private jet and Brains ain't got no private jet. What the fuck, they ain't real for nothing. I'm Brains, he got 15 years. I'm trying to tell the phone, don't they lie, don't. I'm like, oh, gonna really pop out like raccoon. <laughs> like, oh, real on that. Man, don't do me like that. I'm telling Stay silent. Oh, bro, stay silent. All you gotta do is stay silent. <laughs> yeah, I'm fresh out, we'll draw it, everything. <laughs> he, he, he know braids, I ain't know it. Yeah. <laughs> boy, I'm finna lose my mind. Hey, like, y'all don't even understand. Y'all don't even understand what the ball here. Oh my God. I'm real on that. Straight Alabama shit, I think it. I'm just saying, do y'all, so y'all really think I had 15 years? Dude, I want to know that. Do <laughs> y'all really think I had 15 years? Dream. And I'm thinking that y'all come in this bullshit. I'm like, what the f are you doing? I really ain't no opening. I'm out. I'm chilling. <laughs> Big. Look, it's so many I can free, man. I swear. God damn, I miss them boys. I can't lie. When you leave that cell, boy, that shit hits you different. Yeah, it's a real. In that bitch, boy. And they ain't never coming home. Most of the real niggas in the man. Like, they ain't never coming home. Boy, I do it for them boys. They know it. They know Brazer got them. They know Brazer got them. Like, yeah. For real. You know, sure. Yeah, I'm still a real. I'm chilling now. I'm chilling. I don't want to smoke with nobody. I'm finna run over a whole bunch of millions. I'm trying to touch a billion before I turn 40. Oh, this is my goal. I'm trying to turn a big fire so before I got 13 more years to pull it. <laughs> and I'm on it. You hear me? Oh, yeah. Everything. Now, on the title of this, I said that you the new Gucci Mane. And, bro, I'm going to be real with you, bro. You kind of giving me Gucci Mane vibes. Why is you getting out bullying everybody, bro? Just get to the money. Now, I done read your story. I know your story. You done been in and out of jail too much, bro. Go get the bag, bro. Go get the bag, bro. Don't worry about thinking these rap dudes is fake. We all know that, YouTube family. So look, man, that was the story of Honeycomb. Brazy, bro. That y'all see why I say he the new Gucci man now, right? Cause I, man, he got out tripping. He been tripping his whole life, but he talented, bro. The man is talented. So man, make sure y'all go stream all the music he about to drop. Y'all go get everything he finna put out, man. Brazy, stay out of trouble, fool. Hey man, this is what Christian Clean Cliff, man, the Cliff Real TV. Y'all let me know if y'all want to hear anybody else. Y'all know what to do if you want to hear somebody else. Jump in that comment section. Now, I'm sorry, I supposed to drop the Jerry Springer video, but I had to push Honeycomb Braves to the front of the line, bro. Uh, yeah, man, y'all jump in that comment section. Let me know how y'all feel. What's your Christian Clean Cliff or Cliff Real TV? I'm down. YouTube family, I'm going to need y'all to check out my boy, Ari Young, man, coming out of California. He a streamer. He's a YouTuber, and he's an artist. Let's just say he's multi-talented. I mean, hey, the boy could be the next Constantinette. Twitch, holla at my boy. Send him a bag. To everybody that be on Twitch, even Discord. Man, y'all need to holla at my boy, Ari Young, man. This the wave of the future. 
Live streamers are creating a new millionaires. And I got faith in my boy, Eric Young. I mean, he was smart enough to get the promo. Y'all make sure y'all tap into his show, Stay Cloudy. Subscribe to him on Twitch, Eric Young. Man, look, he gaming, he doing music, he live streaming, blunt rolling contest, Mario Kart, you name it. Like I told y'all, this the wave of the future, man. Now let's jump into the video y'all been waiting for. YouTube family, I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my boy Mimosa, man, and mobbing with Mimosa and his podcast. Look, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you trying to get exposure, man, and you know you deserve that spotlight and your music really hidden, mobbing with Mimosa is the place to go. I'm telling y'all, man, he running the multimedia blog site and he'll pull up for the interview. He's been seen on camera with Big Sad 1900 collaborator Lil Booth out in Tacoma. In that interview with Ye Ye, he did an interview with XD Stacks, FTFKT, and man, he even got me and BBDL on the interview, man. Listen, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you want some exposure, I'm telling you, Vancouver, Tequila, Tacoma, Seattle, Kennewick, Royal Orange, Renton, Belltown, tap in with Mobby with Mimosa, man. He on the rise. I'm letting y'all know, man, he one of my guys. I'm putting a stamp on it. Look out for my with Mimosa podcast and make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't inbox me any more links. If you're in the greater Northwest area and you rap and you make music, I don't want to see no more links. Don't inbox me any more links. I need to see you on Mobbing with Mimosa's podcast. Then I'll pay attention. I'm pippin' like I'm done one. I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out I'm bomb. Hit her with the daddy stroke, I got the little baby.